Hey guys, um, I have been contemplating filming this video for about two years now, due to the fact that uh, I feel like somebody was going to take anything that I say in here, use it, and I don't know, just try to use it as a step-by-step -step guide. And I want to put this disclaimer out there that this is not that kind of video. Um, this is just my experience, more so than explanation of how to, and again, this is not a step-by-step -step guide to getting on stage with your favorite band. The whole getting on stage with bands, for me personally, I would say the first initial thought of it came to me probably the end of eighth grade, so this is like 2007, summer of 2007, so basically 10 years ago now. Um, it was just, it was just kind of a passing thought. I was like, hey, it'd be really cool for me to play on stage with a band. I think I was thinking about Fall Out Boy <laughs> at the time, and I, I didn't really give it a second thought then because it's just like, I don't know, it would never happen. Um, skip forward, what, three years, I started getting more into guitar and learning, I got an all time low, and I found a video of them letting somebody play on Dear Maria on stage with them, and I was like, whoa, hold on now, this is really rad, I think I want to do this, so, the fall of 2010, I had this, like, really big idea with the Dirty Work Tour, I'm gonna play Jim Marie on stage. I'm gonna be the next, you know, straight to DVD kid. I'm gonna be the next, like, Dan from Pennsylvania. And, yeah. So I did this whole video campaign for the Dirty Work Tour. Uh, all Time I did a festival in fall of 2011. I did a video thing for that. And then I tried one for Warp Tour. And I was like, after that, I was like, okay, let me just not do these anymore because they're not working. Um, and so that fall was the rock show tour and I asked, I didn't really get to ask before the show. No, I asked Jack before the show, I remember. And he was like, yeah, well, we play with in-ears. And I'm like, well, let me go run to freaking Radio Shack when it was so open and go buy myself some earphones. But it was a little bit more than that. A few months later, I played with the summer set. I, just simply asked. Um, I got to do Time Bomb. It was a fall. Uh, I'd actually asked about playing Jim Maria. We had talked about all the technical stuff on it. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. Let's make it happen. We talked to Matt. And Matt was like, okay, we'll do this. So Time Bomb comes around. And the kid that they pulled up, uh, well, he's a nice guy. I met him time or two uh watching back that video i don't know it's just kind of like eh. so jack like pulled me up in the middle of the sun like what what's going on here so that happened and then six months later i went to go see them in missouri and honestly god i'd asked alex i think in soundcheck and in meet and greet and they had gotten done with a love like war and they were about to play dear maria and I'm thinking in my head, okay, I travel eight hours to come see this show. Do I really want to hold this sign up? And I said, screw it. And I held it up. And Jack was like, I was like, wait, what? Hold on. Hold on. 
what's happening to like little Darnell? Like twenty one year old Darnell, like eighteen year old Darnell is thinking, holy crap, like this is not happening. So it happened, and that was really freaking cool. Um, in fall, I just asked the guy from the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. I put a note on my phone. I was like, can I play face down? And he's like, I don't know, can you? And I, I don't know, it just, that happened. A year later, I didn't even, okay, now, let me explain the main. That was spur of the moment. I actually didn't plan that. I didn't ask, to, I asked to play Into Your Arms, as a matter of fact. And I was just hanging out in the back of the crowd, and they started playing Right Girl. And John points me out from the back of the crowd, and I'm just like, what? Hold on. So I'm running to the middle of the crowd because I'm thinking he's pointing at somebody else. And he finds me again and he points at me. He's like, you, get up here. And I'm like, no, I don't know the lyrics of this song. Um, disclaimer on that, I thoroughly enjoy the main live show. I know maybe four of their songs. I listen to a little bit of their newer records, but I just absolutely love their live show. And I try to see them every time that they're in town. Um, no offense to them or anybody else that's a fan of theirs, but I just... It is what it is, so, sorry. Um, so I got up there, I butchered the crap out of that. I think two months later, I went to go see Motion City Soundtrack, and that was a day of thing. Um, again, I just had some explanation stuff to tell them. A year later, I played with the fray. That was something special, and sorry, mom and dad. Uh, I know we'd had this agreement for me to, like, not go to any more shows, but I drove three hours down to Austin to go play on stage at the Fray at the Beauty Theater. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah. For our sickest kids, that was a, uh, day of thing. I made signs saying welcome home for their first show back, uh, for so what, they played the Friday, that Friday night. Oddly enough, I was actually gonna go to San Antonio that day to go see We The Kings for their 10 year tour because I knew with the festival, they weren't gonna get to play their whole set. And I was like, oh, I wanna see this whole tour in all its glory. And I was like, no, I really love Forever The Sickest Kids and they mean way more to me than We The Kings do. I love We The Kings, I love their music, but Forever The Sickest Kids, they're from Dallas and it's just, it, I, I don't know, I, I don't really feel like I need to explain it. I think you guys understand for those of you that have fans from you know, the towns that you're from. Um, so the next day I caught Jonathan walking around and he was like well are you going to watch our set I was like of course I just have to figure out how to get to the barricade because you guys go on in about an hour here and there's no way in the world I'm going to be able to fight for it because one everybody is like already getting barricaded for like Envy on the Coast and We the Kings and Mayday and I was just like I, I don't really want to fight everybody he's like I tell you what if you want, you can come watch side stage. Uh, just wait by the gate and we'll take you back. And I was like, wait, whoa, hold on, what? What, hold on, 16 year old Darnell is just like, first I got to get on stage the night before and like watch She Is A Lady side stage. And now you're wanting me to watch your whole set side stage? So then Caleb comes up to me and he's like, hey, do you want to sing my part on She's A Lady? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. stop, stop, stop you're actually asking me to sing on stage with you in front of all these people and you trust me with this? <laughs> like, so I sang it for him and I was like, dude, you sound perfectly fine. I was like, what? So when that moment happened, he pulls me up and I'm like, yeah, I was jamming the whole freaking show, every single word I knew. And I get up there and I'm just like, see the crowd and I'm like, what's going on here? And I watched the video back and I'm like, darn out. Take off your shoes, come in the room, and baby, let's try not to argue. Like, it's not that hard, kid. So, uh, I will forever be yelling at myself every time I watch that video. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I really consider myself incredibly lucky. Uh, do I really need to talk about the time bomb on the last one Renegades tour? No, not really. Uh, that was kind of, a, that was another spur of the moment. I jokingly said to Jack, uh, if you need help on Time Bomb, you know, I'll do it, but uh, I was really joking. <laughs> I mean, I, I got up there to have a good time along with the rest of the kids. As a matter of fact, Jack handed me the mic and he was like, you know what to do. 
and I was trying to get the girls behind me. I was like, yo, come up here, enjoy this moment, live in this moment. I wasn't even worried about guitar. So once I got them going, I went back and I was just like hanging out by Jack and just like jamming with him and Ryan. And Alex stopped the song to get everybody to put their phones away. And Jack was like showing me how to play. I was like, okay, Jack, first of all, you already know I know how to play the song. Secondly, else time. You're like, do you want to? And I'm like, okay. So I pulled out my ears. He's like, all right, cool. So yeah, that happened. And then the guy, there was a guy that had asked to play Time Bomb when he had gotten up on stage. And I felt really bad because he came over and he was like really not upset, upset, but I could tell he was a little bit bummed out that it wasn't happening. So um, I had to talk with him after the show. I was just like, hey, uh, there's some other things. I, I had my in ears and he didn't. And that, that's just the thing. So. The takeaway from all of this is, again, this isn't a cookie cutter, like, step-by-step -step how to get on stage with your favorite band. This is just, um, I guess, more so things to think about. They're professional musicians, and even asking them in a meet and greet for the day of, it's very hard to plan because if they have to cut their set short, um, they have to figure out how to get you up on stage if you're not a side stage or if you if they haven't arranged something then I, it's probably not going to happen I mean sometimes it happens last second <coughs> excuse me but it, it, it's not a guarantee and, it, and it's, it's something that's really difficult to do um, unless it is planned well in advance and it's kind of hard to get a hold of something else these days uh, I consider myself <laughs> incredibly lucky and blessed that I've gotten to do these things but I, I as of recently have really shied away from the conversation somebody be like hey didn't you play on stage with so and so and I'd be like yeah I did it was really fun but let's talk about how awesome their set was I, I don't know I just kind of like to downplay it not to say that I'm ungrateful but I just I kind of feel like I'm bragging when I talk about it whether it just casually come up in conversation or somebody asked me about it. And so I, that's another reason why I'm making this video is because I'm not tired of talking about it, but in a sense I kind of am. So uh, if you ever want to talk to me about it at a show or anything, um, I guess I will. But at the same time, you got to understand I've told so many stories what seems like a thousand times and it's really not, but it's just... I'm, I'm thankful for what I've gotten to do, but I just, I, it feels like I'm rubbing in the face of others that having had to do those things, and there's, I've met a lot of people that have said, how do you get on stage, and, and all this stuff, how do you get so lucky, and I don't know, I think it's partially luck, but part of it's persistence, I asked All Time Low to play Dear Maria, Dirty Work, on Saturday Night, uh, worked for a rock show, Spring Fever, House Party, seven times before I finally got on stage with them. Well, at least before I played Dear Maria. There's some bands that I just asked once and they're like, sure. Um, and so there's that. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I don't, I don't, there's not much else to say. So I hope this helped and I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was kind of informative. I don't know. Um, if you guys like this video, click that like button. If you want to watch more of my videos, click that subscribe button. That's actually correct for once in my life. Uh, I will see you guys next time. And yeah, all right. bye guys.